Hello, students. This is Dr. Fazan Mirza. I'm discussing with you another question of uh, regarding regarding inherited chain diseases. And here we are taking a disease which is actually a dominant autosomal dominant disorder. Hunting's disease is an inherited disease of CNS. We know that uh, the symptoms of HD de develop in adulthood may include uncontrollable muscular movement, short term memory loss, and changes in mood. HD is caused by a dominant allele of Huntington gene on chromosome four. So we know that this is actually an autosomal dominant disease. So we can just recall that this is an autosomal dominant disorder. So when we are, how do we know it's an, it's a dominant disorder? Because it's already mentioned that the disorder is caused by a dominant allele. How do we know it's autosomal? Because they are saying that it's present on chromosome four. Then they're asking you what's it, uh, what, explain what's allele and what's dominant. I think you can just uh, do the, you can just explain that very well uh, yourself. Uh, coming to the graph here, the graph here shows the dominant allele of Huntington gene contain many repeats of triplet sequences of nucleotide CAG. We know there's a CAG stutter. We can recall the CAG stutter. We have learned this fact in our syllabus. So let's recall the CAG stutter in Huntington disease and it's present on chromosome four. The age at which symptoms of AD first appear is linked with the number of CAG repeats. So you can see that if the number of CAG repeats is very high, then the disease occurs at a very, very early age. And if the number of CAG stutters is low, uh, then the disease takes a very long time to manifest itself. The age at which symptoms of AG first appear in years. So you can just see that, for example, if there are 50 repeats of CAG on the, on the chromosome 4, then the individual will have this uh, disease being shown somewhere, somewhere in the, in the late 20s. So 28 or something like that. So we know this from the data given to us. Describe the pattern shown by the figure in figure 1.1. We need to give, whenever we are, we are using the question of describe, we, we give that trend and we quote the data. So there is an inverse relation, negative correlation between the number of repeats of CAG and the age of onset of illness. Mean no repeats are actually are, are leading to early onset. For instance, CAG repeats are 50, then the, the age of onset will be 28. So we can we get two marks here by mentioning the, the description. A blood test used to detect the dominant allele is available for people who are at risk at HD. A blood test. So, so what sample are you taking? Are you taking red blood cells? No, you can't take red blood cells because the red blood cells do not have nucleus. So we take white blood cells from the blood sample and we take out the gene from the white blood cell and we test it from the for the for the disorder, whatever we are doing. So for every gene testing, we take the we take the allele from the white blood cells in the blood sample. Now further, the question says that uh, suggests why some people are at, at risk of AG may decide not to get blood tested. Uh, why? Why? Because some people might be hemophobic, afraid of seeing blood, or afraid of needles or pain. Some people might be fearful of the results of being positive. Since no treatment is available, but the cost of getting the allele tested would not seem to be worth it. Some may fear it might be a, might affect their family or social relation. Then what? What are? What can be? For example, if they ask you, what are the advantages of getting the allele tested? So what can be the advantages? The advantages can be that yes, the person can start to receive the life changing uh, life lifestyle changes that can be adjusted. The, per, the the couple can decide to have the child or the person can decide to have the uh, gametes uh, gametes altered using gene editing so that they can have a healthy child. Whatever they need to decide, they can. So this is an advantage here. Or they can decide not to have children altogether because if the if the person is having Huntington allele, the person is dominant for the allele, so he or she will be passing the allele to the offsprings uh, uh, in in the next generation. Now, continuing to another question here, for example, the next question comes a mutation in the gene of fruit fly gives rise to white fried, white, uh, white eyed flies instead of the normal red, red eyed flies. The allele for red eyes is dominant to the allele of white flies. So we know the fact given to us is red eyes is dominant to white eyes. So we use a capital R and small r respectively here. The phenotype of fly you can mention here. So red eyed female, red eyed male, white eyed female, white eyed male. So you can see that red eyed male is zero and white eyed female is zero. So our, our values are given to as 54 and 46 for red eyed female and white eyed male respectively. So this red eyed female, um, if, if, if the gender is mentioned, we can expect that this is a, this is a sex link question. This might be a sex link question because the opposite gender is not having the other phenotype at all. So this red female, the red eyed female would be either XR, XR capital in both or XR capital in XR small. In either case, this is sex, this, this sex linkage can be seen here. Uh, for white-eyed male, the white-eyed male is having the recessive allele R, and the recessive allele R must be present of the X chromosome only because the Y chromosome will lag the allele since it's it's uh, it's uh, linked with the gender. So they are saying that they possess two different sex chromosomes. Now we are we can confirm that yes, this is the question of the sex linkage. If this was not given to us, then we cannot be sure that whether this question was of sex linkage or not. So as in human, they are saying that draw the genetic diagram for table, in table two point in table one point one would have been produced. So we know where the red eyed fly was uh, crossed with the white eyed fly. This is given to us, and the offsprings are red eyed female and the white eyed male. The white eyed male can only be X R Y. How so? Because we know that the white eyed male 
can be x small r and y. So we did know we did, we just mentioned this is the condition here. So if this is the condition of x r y, this x r y, this if this this if this person here, this this male received a y chromosome from the father, and is he received x small r from the mother. So this means that the mother must have the small r's in both. So the because otherwise the feed the x small r will not be passed. So we we are using x small r x small r here. So it will make two kind of gametes where this will make again two kind of gametes x capital R y x small r small r. So the gametes can be can be seen here and then we just perform the cross. So we have the red eyed female here and the white eyed male here. The next they are saying to you use the chi square test here. So the chi square test here actually shows to you they they say that the expected ratio of red eyed females and white eyed males is one is to one. So this is the sex linkage ratio already given to you one is to one. So the red eyed female 54 and 46 observed already given in the previous table. So I just withdraw the value of 50, 54 and 46 from the table previously given to me. So this is all the value given to me. So how come how how I came across the observed expected to be 50 50 each? So I'll just add the two values up together. This is 100. I'll divide 100 by two because this is in the ratio one is to one. So I'll write 50 50 each here. O minus E here, O minus E squared. So O minus E meant me that I have just uh, mentioned this 54 and 50 and I, answer, I write the answer here. The answer will then be squared and mentioned here. And the 16 can then be divided with the value of E, which is 50 to get this. So I have my two columns ready. The next is I'll just sum up the values of O minus E squared upon E. So I sum up this column here, which is O minus E squared upon E. So when I sum these up, my answer is 0 0.64. Now we need to compare this against the critical value. We know that the critical value is taken for 0 0.05. We have two degrees of freedom given to me. So that in this case, the category, the degree of freedom will be categorized as number of categories minus one. So number of categories minus one is two minus one. I have two categories here. How do I know I have two categories? This is the first category, this is the second category. So for, for chi-squared test, when we calculate the degrees of freedom, so how we calculate the degree of freedom? The degree of freedom is calculated as n minus one. So it's n minus one already given to you here. So n is the number of categories. So in this case, it was two minus one. So answer comes out to be one. So what I'll do, I'll look at the column of one here, the degree of freedom. This is the value of one and the probability of 0 0.05. My answer is 3.84. So 3.84 is my critical value. I compare my 3.84 value with my calculated chi squared value. My calculated chi squared value was 0 0.64, which is way small than the critical value. So in this case, there is no significant difference uh, in the, uh, the, the, the significant, the, the difference is actually not significant. It's purely due to chance. So this is what we will state at the end. And this is what can be, can be, can be seen in this diagram and in this question. Uh, this is from my side. Thank you so much.